Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps. Healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Miriam. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Writer Ministries. Thank you, Lord, for, for um, giving this place to us. Uh, let's open up with prayer and just usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit that we are open to hear everything that he has for us to have this morning in jesus name father god we bless you this day lord god lord we ask you to open the uh our eyes lord to open our ears lord of our spirit lord that we can hear and know your revelation knowledge lord god and all that you have for us today lord and that all that that we hear and see, Lord, and everything that goes into our understanding, Lord, will be part of us, Lord God, that you will seal it upon our hearts and bring it to our remembrance, Lord, that we can walk in your paths, Holy Spirit, that we can listen to you, Lord Jesus, and keep our face fixed on you like flint, Lord Jesus, that we may worship the Lord and be well-pleasing in his sight and be those um, people that he has called us to be. We bless you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. Because it's, it's God who gives us strength to walk in his fullness, isn't it? It's God who gives us strength to be that, that perfect child that he's called us to be. And so, you know, I used to think it was my uh, responsibility to be perfect. You know, and that's, you know, that's a, a lot of law teaching, that it was like up to me to be obedient all the time. And if I wasn't o obedient, that I fell from the glory of God, right? That I fell from his favor, that I was in trouble, right? <laughs> right? Just like with your parents, you know, because I was raised as a child in church. And so, you know, that's, I think that's the way they used to keep us in line. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like God's always watching you, you know, it's like you. <laughs> and, and I know that God is always with me and always watching me and always loving me and caring for me. But it, it wasn't that. He was looking for all the wrong things that I ever did, right? And I always felt that he was the God of the big stick, right? And ready to bring you back into subjection whenever you strayed, right? Whenever you, you know, did anything. And, of course, the devil was always there to tell you you did everything wrong. And so there was no way out. You could not be perfect. I mean, if you prayed, it was never good enough. It was never long enough, right? If you did repentance, I mean, your knees could never get bloody enough, right? And it was just never enough. You could never get right with God. And, you know, I just got so frustrated with it and so um, annoyed, actually. And, and finally, just like gave up trying to get right with God. Because there was just no point. It was just like, Lord, I can't do this. I don't know how that pastor stays perfect all the time. I can't do it. Right? Do you know what happened here? My focus was totally turned on my behavior and whether I could make myself perfect enough for God. Instead of looking to Jesus, who was already perfect, and he paid the price for all of my sins, making me perfect. You know, and I, they teach us that occasionally, but it never made sense with all the other teachings. You know, it, it didn't jive, and so it never just sank in. The, always the, the stick sank in. <laughs> Right? And it's, a, it's like I could never get under, get out from under. And I know that many Christians feel this same way. And 
until they come to the real life. No, I said I repented. I stopped doing that. I turned the other way. And you just put your foot down and say, no, I am right with God now. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, no, I, I did repent. I, I did. And then all of a sudden you felt clean again. You know, and but then, you know, with the, the grace teaching and everything, I realized, you know, I could have had that all along. I could have had that all along. I didn't have to grovel. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to be perfect in myself because there's no way I could be perfect, right? Because every time I, I had a thought of bad iniquity, the Bible calls it, it was like, whoa, no, what are you going to do with this now? Bad thought. You know what? It wasn't even us thinking it. It was the devil putting it in your head. <laughs> you know, I thought it was me. <laughs> I thought it was. And until one day I, I realized, man, would that thought ever come from me? That was so icky, you know. I would never have thought that. And I thought, hmm. Hmm. You know, because the devil always goes too far. He goes one step too far. And you all of a sudden realize, hmm. I smell skunk. <laughs> and you realize that you're getting pulled, you know, and, and tricked. And, you know, somebody's not telling me the truth here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you realize that this is all going off in your head. And he's just like, huh? <laughs> and you, you come to stop to think. And pretty soon, you, that was stupid. And then all of a sudden, it gets real quiet. It's real quiet. You don't hear it anymore. That thought just kind of disappears. And in fact, you have to think to remember what that stupid thought was. Right? <laughs> and you go, yeah, that was definitely not me. I'm not going to go rob a bank. Really? You know? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it, because it, it's so outlandish. There's like, what? <laughs> You know, but we're watching too much TV. <laughs> so this sermon this morning is called, What Do You See? What do you see? Do you see yourself robbing a bank? No. So it was, there's no way that that was going to happen, right? You knew it was a lie. But the whole point here is today is I want to get you to see what the Lord sees, to see yourself as he sees you what do you see amen so i i kind of already uh, alluded to um we've all been given the name of jesus right we've been given all authority in the name of jesus and we know that god gave him authority right he gave him all authority in heaven and earth to, you know, and then Jesus turns around and gives us that authority, makes us ambassadors in his name so that we can stand here as Jesus did with all that power and all that authority in his name. And then besides that, God gave us, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all power over the enemy, right? In Acts 2, what does it say? I think you need to know that. Get it before your eyes. Because that's it's real important uh, pertaining as to where we're going with this. Acts 1, I'm sorry. 1 8. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So we've received all authority and all power of God. Okay, now when we say, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, do you see the power of God going out? Do you see what happens when you say, in the name of Jesus, in the Spirit? And most times we don't. We just, I, I just, you know, and the Lord showed me, he says, when you say that, you are calling attention of every heavenly being. You are calling them to attention, right? Of all the heavenly hosts. You're saying, in the name of Jesus, 
And when you say that, you know that every knee must bow and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so when you say that, picture in your heart all of heaven coming to attention. Everything stops. The name of Jesus was used. And they're waiting to be dispatched to do whatever it is that comes next. Right? In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what is the power of the Holy Spirit? It is all the power of God. Whose spirit is he? He's God's spirit. Right? So all of God's power is dispatched. All of God's power. Can you imagine? You have all authority to dispatch all of God's power. I mean, that's huge. It's huge when you just open your mouth and say. That's why saying it and speaking it out is so vital. You must say it. You must say, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And in saying this, you're releasing all of God's power by the authority in the name of Jesus, binding and loosing anything. Satan can do nothing against God's power. What do you see? Do you see your enemy fleeing from you? Do you see sickness fleeing and running? Because picture it as a devil, a devil of cancer, a devil of arthritis, a devil of sciatic, a devil of fear, a devil of, of whatever it is that they're doing. They must flee. What? At the power of God in the name of Jesus, right? Amen. And so I say, like, do you see all God's glory and all his power coming in as a flood, washing away any evil that would stand in your way? Any problem that would stand in your way? It will just annihilate it. Have you ever seen a flood? I've seen pictures. I have never seen a flood per se, but I know that they're very scary from the pictures even. They look really devastating, you know, because you see this great big wall of water and you see trees tumbling around and, and cars and everything else and this wall of water that goes, and a person doesn't have a chance, right? And it just wipes out everything. And in its path is all this ooze and goo with whatever debris stuck in it, right, after it's gone. And so it just carried it all away. It's, there's nothing that can stand in its way, right? It just washes it all out. I mean, they talk about tsunamis and all of this, you know, that wall of water. That is the like the power of God when it comes through. What devil can stand in front of that, right? And how about the wind? I, have you seen, when you speak out, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know what the, the tornadoes and the hurricanes do. They just, and there's nothing that can stand in their way. They're just, I'm, I know that these are destructive forces, but I want you to see that the enemy doesn't have a chance, right? And when you picture this in your heart and you picture it, when you speak out, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you're speaking out all of God's power. And, you know, and that is so much greater than any flood. It's so much greater than any hurricane. It's so much greater than any tornado that could come through. Amen? It's enormous. And you are in authority. You have that power and all that authority in your mouth. In your mouth. So realize that when you do say in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are dispensing all of God's power with all of God's authority to do whatever you send it to do. That's total control of this, every situation and every circumstance in your life. You see a mighty rushing wind Wiping it out. There's nothing that can stand in the way. 
of God's power. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Any sickness, because remember, sickness is just a symptom of sin. And Jesus already wiped it out. God already took, broke that curse. Sickness has got to go when you tell it to go in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. What sickness, what devil of sickness can stand before Almighty God? See, we all think that, oh Lord, I can't cast out a devil. But that's just because, you know, when anybody says that just doesn't understand the power that God's put in their mouth. Because the devil has told them, no, you can't. Oh, I guess I can't. See, so there's a knowing that, you know, the power of God. And that's why he, he gives us that picture of it inside. Knowing that whatever we bind and whatever we lose, that his power is there to back it up in the name of Jesus. Amen? And so with that, all that at your disposal, that when you command and you declare, and you rebuke, that when you bind, when you lose it, have no doubt, no doubt at all, that wherever you dispatch the power of God, it has gone forth and done what you commanded it to do. That when Jesus said, fever, I rebuke you, it was gone. The woman got up and served them. She was totally well. The fever was gone. That was that. Because he understood the power that it, it invoked. Amen? And so when we understand the power that God has given to you, so I want you to picture it in your heart. And picture devils fleeing. Devils fleeing. Not just, oh, Hey, trying to hang on business. Uh-uh. No. Fleeing. Fleeing. They are running. They are getting whipped up in the tornado and the hurricane. They are getting flooded out with the power of God. Amen? They are getting so torn apart and ravished by the power of God, they can't get out of there quick enough. They know what's coming. When you say, in the name of Jesus, poof! Right? And then you say the power is the Holy Spirit. They're just like, that's it. They're, they're shaking on their way out. <laughs> they know it's right behind them. And they're caught. And they will not get away. It will take them down. That's how much power and authority you have in your mouth. In your mouth. I mean, that's amazing. So when the Lord said in the Old Covenant, in the Old, I will put in my word in your mouth, in the mouth of your seed, and in the mouth of your seed, seed. He's telling you that he's dispensing all power in you. Because what he's, I'll forgive all of your iniquities and put my word in your heart and in your mind and in your mouth. So he's calling this out. Amen? So it's here. It's here. Do you see all that power coming from you? You see that you're a hurricane? <laughs> Tear with me to Luke 4. I want to take you to verse 33. I know you thought I was going to take you over to 18, but you know. You already know that you're anointed. Verse 33. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. Oh, didn't he know who's present, who was in the house? Did, apparently he didn't realize Jesus was there. Saying, let us alone. What have we ought to do with thee? Oh, I guess he did know. Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? 
I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. <laughs> and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he hath commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. So who has all that authority and power? We do. You do. Who's in control whether that devil stays or goes? You are. You are. Because it's with your mouth that it's allowed or not allowed. You ever see a small child? They'll push you as far as they think they can. Nancy's well aware of this. <laughs> Gonna miss that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that they try you. That I think the pushing the edge of the envelope came with children. <laughs> because they will push until you just say, enough is enough. <laughs> the idea is say enough early <laughs> before it gets to that, right? But as parents learn, children train us to do that eventually. <laughs> but, so the devil is the same way. He sneaks in. I, I love the picture that Nina says. He's like that bar. He just sneaks in. But once you spot him, once you see him, that's it. That's it. Cast him out. Hold thy peace. Come out of him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at 38. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. Right? He dispensed God's power, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Amen? So this is God performing the kingdom. This is God performing and his power upon the earth in the name of Jesus and by the, his, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. God is, this is God's kingdom. And this is how he operates. And this is how he expects us to operate. I was talking to my youngest son yesterday and he says, I don't know, my prayers just don't seem to be working. I said, your prayers are working. You're just not praying it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, well, every time I pray to get well, you know, it just doesn't seem to happen. I said, well, honey, that's because God already did it. You know that. <laughs> and you don't, you know, tell God to do something he told you to do. It's like, Simon, come on, one-on-one. You know this. <laughs> I didn't say that. I was nice. <laughs> but <laughs> I said, well, honey, that all you, you're, you're just praying it wrong. You're, you're praying God to do something he's already done. And so I said, you command the sickness to go. He's already given you healing. So you command the sickness to go. You're doing it backwards. You're c trying to command healing to come. He's already healed. They're already healed. You're commanding the sickness to go. You know, we're, we did it backwards for years. We thought we were doing it right. You know, commanding healing to come. Well, healing's already there. Right? Get rid of the sickness. Your body's already healthy and whole. Get rid of the pest. <sighs> right? And so when you say, I am healed, you're not a liar. People go, well, how come you got this or that or that? It's like, hey. It's gone in Jesus' name. I commanded it to go in Jesus' name. I took authority of that. Don't you worry about that. I'm whole. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen? And so, remember the centurion? You see, Jesus says, oh, that's great faith. I've never not heard this great of faith in all of Israel. The centurion, just send the word, and my servant shall be healed. Just send the tornado, 
and all sickness will be swept away. Just send the word to make all things right in my life. Did you hear that? Just send the word to make all things right in your life. Send the word. In Jesus' name and by the power of his Holy Spirit. Just send the word to make all things right in your life. Who's in control of that? We are. Who's in charge of the power of God on the earth? We are. <gasps> well, that's kind of a big responsibility, God. I don't know if I want to do that. There's a lot of people out there that say that. And Jesus says, okay, all right. I got a lot of tools in my toolbox. I got lots of little pairs of pliers. I got lots of screwdrivers. I got, I got pipe wrenches, and I got, got torque wrenches, and I got, I got even jaws of life in there, right? <laughs> big guys, big boys. You can be any kind of tool you want to be. How far will you let God take you? Amen? If all you want to be is a pair of pliers, God says, well, I have uses for those too. But really, don't you want to be the jaws of life? Yeah. Yeah. Knowing all your authority and all the power of God is in your hands and in your mouth. Don't you want to be the jaws of life? I do. I want to be the big tool. Here to save the day. What did I tell you? I told you you were the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> that you were the rescue team, you're it. You're it. Just send the word. It's by your words that all the might of God is released to destroy all evil. And not only that, but it's sent to what? Restore everything that was stolen from you. It's there to get back everything that was lost. It's there to what? Be just totally, you know, anything that the devil, you know, took from you, God, that's how you get it back. It's by your words and the power of God that you dispense with your words. That's how you get it back. Too many people are waiting for God to restore to them. Well, God's waiting for you to open your mouth. Speak! He's waiting for you to release God's power on the earth to get it back. You want a double portion? Open your mouth. Lord, I want that. Knowing that you're going to get it. Knowing that you got it. This is funny. I'll show you what God showed me. About, about the double portion. This is cool. He says, um, this is in Judges. You don't have to turn there. Judges 1. He said, and Caleb said, he that smiteth this guy and taketh it, <laughs> or this place, I guess, and taketh it, to him will I give uh, Ashar, my daughter, to wife. Okay, you go take that city, man. I'm going to give you my daughter to wife. And Otheniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. And he gave him uh, Asha, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass when she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from her off her ass. And Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. So her blessing was the land, right? But she says, give me the water for the land. She asked for a double portion. She asked for the double. You want the double? Give me that, Lord. That's asking. It's command due. It's drawing on your bank account, right? It's like, uh, I'll take 100 right now. Thank you. 
I want that right now. It's, it's going to the waitress and say, I'd like this or that. Girls say that. Guys say, bring me this or that. Girls say, I'd like a salad. Yeah. Dressing on the side. <laughs> With the dressing on the side, please. Right? We do it politely. And so, but we're really making a, a demand on it, right? That's what I want, and that's what I expect to get. If I don't get that, you will hear about it and have to go back and get me the right thing, right? <laughs> really, is what we're saying. <laughs> but so this is a demand that we are putting out with our mouth, and this is how we dispense the power of God to get back everything that the devil stole from you. Everything that you ever were lost, right? Everything that was ever finagled from you. You think, oh, Lord, my life was just spent in, in, in waste and because I didn't know you, Lord. I, I spent years and years and years without you, Lord God. Lord, I need you to make up that time for me so that I can have all your promises and all the blessings that I would have had had I been following you all the, rest, all, all the days of my life. You know, and God honors that. God honors that. He will make sure that nothing will be missing out of your life, even in the little time. Right? Those are going to be the fullest years you ever had. <laughs> right? God will not let anything that you want be fallen to the ground. He will accomplish each and everything. Amen? Not only what he had planned for you, but all your wants and desires as well. He will give them all to you. Anything lost, stolen, or destroyed, right? Or even to have a desire of. God has that desire for you as well. If you have a desire for it, know that if you go, God sees the ha, and we'll get it to you. We'll get it. Ooh, I want to paint. Just like that, he'll give you every other thing. He'll give you every other thing. Nancy came to my house and she said, ooh, I like that white couch. She caught it. <laughs> I, I thought that was funny, though. I was like, okay, I remember when she said that. Yeah, that's right, okay. <laughs> you know, and I know they don't make them like that no more, Lord. I know that. <laughs> no, they, they just don't. <laughs> Turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians 4. God is good. He knows all the desires of your heart before you do. And then he shows them to you. Then you go, oh, yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and he goes, I thought you might, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you because know, that's the way God is. And so what is he, how does he show this to you? He puts it in your heart first, doesn't he? And you kind of see it. And, he, and then he'll bring it right before you. And, ooh, yeah, right? And he, all of a sudden, because you know, he, he'll, he'll just kind of nudge you a little bit. Wouldn't you like this or that or that? How about that? You know, and then all of a sudden he'll bring it in front of your face and you go, whoa, yeah, I like that. Right? And then you, you know, and then once you say, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I want that. Yes, Lord, I want to retire early. Yes, Lord, I want a double portion. Yes, Lord, I want this or that. Yeah, that sounds great to me. I'm all for it, right? And that, whether you know, realize it or not, you are loosing that upon the earth and loosing it in heaven. Saying that. Amen. Saying that. That's how easy it is. Dispensing the power of God. Because you're his child. You are his child. Because he wants to give you all things that what? Are going to make you full of joy. He just wants to make you happy. He just wants you joyful. You know, and he knows that when you're so joyful, you can't hardly stand it. You run around to look anywhere you can lay hands on a sick person. You just want to spread the joy. Spread the joy. These people, they get so much money, they can't, don't know what to do with it. They turn into philanthropists, right? <laughs> and start looking to good places they can put all this money, right? 
So that's the way you are when you get full of joy with God. And you don't have any want. You don't have any, any you know, cares like that. It's just going for it. In Luke, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, he says, We have the same spirit of faith, according as it was written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Why do you believe? Because you've seen it on the inside. You've seen it. It's yours. It's yours. You've got the vision of it. You know you're going to get it. Right? You know, and I know when I was in my, my house, and the Lord told me that he was going to give me a mansion. You know, and I was just like, and I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because I was stuck in the house. Right? And that's all I could see was the house. And he told Abram, he says, Abram, get out of your own country. Get away from your family. Because that's all he could see. And I'll make you a wealthy man. And then he says, hey, I'm going to give you a son. And if that's not enough, look, and he couldn't, you know, whoa, really, whoa, how am I going to know this? He says, look to the stars and count them. Look to the sands and measure them. And he says, I can't. Well, that's how many kids you're going to have. See, he gave him the vision. He put something before his eyes because he just couldn't believe it. Sometimes you, you, it's so incredible that we just can't believe it. Like, Lord, I need the picture. And, you know, most of the, he gives you the picture before you even ask, right? And because what? Where do you get that picture, that believer? Because you know it in your heart, right? You see it in your mind's eye, right? And the... We believed, and therefore we spoke. It says in verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen. How do you look at something that's not seen? You look at it with your mind's eye. It's in your heart. Verse 18, while we look at the things which are seen, or look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. How in the world are you going to see something that's not seen? In your heart, don't you? You see it in your heart. And when you see it in your heart, you believe. You believe it. When God told that to Abraham, he's, he says, he believed unto righteousness. That made him right with God. He believed to see what? God's goodness upon the earth. He believed that God was going to make all things right in his life. He believed unto righteousness. That's just by the Holy Ghost just now. He believed that God was going to make all, things, this, all this right in his life and do it in his life. That's righteousness. That's righteousness. That's what he believed unto. Amen? And so, verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, right? But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporary. They're of this earth. But the things which are not seen are eternal. They're heavenly, right? In verse 7 of chapter 5 of Second Corinthians, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So what does that mean? We walk by what God says and the vision that God has given us on the inside. What do you see by your spirit? We walk by that and not by what we see in the flesh. In 2 Corinthians 5, go with me to verse uh, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why are all things become new? It goes on to tell you. <laughs> and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself. So all things are become new because now we're reconciled. The debt of sin is paid. Right? And now we are alive unto God. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. 
What is that? To make all things right. To level it out. All the debt has been paid for. All things need to be set aright now. That is our ministry. Rest girls, I told you you were the Coast Guard. Yeah. <laughs> Come pluck them out of that water that they're drowning in. Out of sorrows, out of sickness, out of disease. Yeah, you're the one. You're the one. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is so awesome. You get to make all things right. All things right. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Sin is a no factor. And hath committed unto us the word of recon the what? The what? The what? The word? That means you got to speak it. The word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now here's, um, where people fall a little bit short. It says, be ye reconciled to God. Be ye, why does it say be ye? It should say ye are reconciled to God. Because you are. But it's telling you to be ye reconciled. Because how many times will people not think that they're reconciled? How many times will they feel guilty, condemned, and not worthy? That's not being reconciled, right? God has made us righteousness. Verse 21, for he hath made us, he says, be ye reconciled. There's no reason not to be. For he hath made him to be sin for you, who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Amen? We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that word we speak out makes all things right. We are the power of God on the earth. I'm going to end it here and finish up next week because there's too much. We are the thing that sets all things right. And you believe unto righteousness because you believe that that word sent is going to make all things what God said it was going to do. Amen? You believe unto righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have been forgiven of every sin. Jesus paid the price. There is no longer any separation. You're reconciled. And it's up to us to tell the world, no, that doesn't matter. God wants all things right in your life. Just ask Jesus into your heart, and he will make all things right in your life. Let's end it with saying the prayer of salvation. Say, Father God, Father God forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And make all things right in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now, I know each and every one of you have, have been saved for many years. But for anybody else who's never said that prayer, you are now born again in the kingdom of God with all authority in Jesus' name. Come to the church. Look it up on the website. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit to get the power of God to be able to dispense that power and set devils to flight and do all the things that God says you can do. Amen? So let's pray and end this right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for showing us that we walk not by sight, Lord God, but we walk by faith in you and in your power and in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that Lord God wherever we send that word Lord it will accomplish all that you sent it to do Lord God I thank you Lord God that you have given us Lord such power and such 
uh, definitive, Lord God, authority in this earth, Lord God, that there is nothing, nothing the devil could do, Lord, to stop us. And there is nothing, Lord God, that you would withhold from us, Lord God. Even you gave us your son, Jesus, Lord God. What else can you give to us, Lord, that he is your, your best and your perfect gift, Lord God, and that you would withhold no good thing from us. I thank you, Lord God, for opening up our are the eyes, Lord, that we see your greatness and your love toward us, Lord God, that you have opened, Lord, Lord as a, a new door, Lord, that we can see that that just saying in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit is not just the thing that we say before we command the devil to go, Lord God, but it is your power and it's your love and your force and your authority, Jesus, Lord that has come upon the earth, Lord, that this is your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We bless you this day, Lord God. In Jesus' name, they all said yes and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Robert with Ryder Ministries. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure it has helped you. And I just also want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So pray with me out loud and accept the Lord as your Savior. Say with me, Heavenly Father, that's right, say Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and dwell within me and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer, God heard you, He's written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will get to be with Him in heaven. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer. So give us a call at 503-652-2650. Let us know you prayed that prayer of salvation. We love you. God loves you. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.